how to assemble the Z-axis. You will need the following tools for the assembly. You will need a half-inch wrench or socket. I highly recommend a socket, a socket or ratcheting wrench as it will make the job go faster. You will need a quarter-inch Allen wrench, a 3 inch Allen wrench, a 9 64th inch Allen wrench, a 3 32nd inch Allen wrench, and a 7 64th inch Allen wrench. So the first thing that we need to do is assemble the bearing block assembly. Um, you will need a bearing block with the bearing block cover, and you want to use one of the bearing blocks that has a rod pressed into it. We will need two quarter 20 by 5 8 inch screws, two 5 16 nylon mock nuts, two 5 16 by 2 inch carriage bolts, two needle thrust bearing assemblies, four flat thrust washers, one helical anti-backlash motor coupler, one half inch to half inch shaft coupler, and one half inch shaft collar. So the first step in doing this is to take the cover and you want to put it on the side of the bearing block where the bearing is exposed. So we're going to put it over the bearing and we are going to tighten it up. Uh, we're going to put the, uh, the quarter 20 socket head cap screws in the holes and then we'll tighten them up. Uh, you're going to want to use the 3 16 inch Allen wrench to get them tight. Um, I highly recommend that you use Loctite on every screw that doesn't require a uh, that doesn't have a uh, either a nylon lock nut or a lock washer on it, so these would be good candidates. Next, we are going to put on the uh, the mounting screw. So you're going to take your your two inch carriage bolts here, and we're going to push them through the the holes running perpendicular to the drill rod, and we're going to use the nylon lock nuts, and we're going to make them finger tight. This will allow us to slide the entire assembly into the T-slots of the aluminum extrusion. Next, you're going to want to take one needle thrust bearing and two flat thrust washers. What we're going to do is we are going to place the needle thrust bearing between the flat thrust washers, and then we are going to place the entire assembly on the short side of the drill rod. Once we place that assembly on the short side of the drill rod, we are going to slip the coupler, the half inch to half inch coupler on the drill rod, and we are going to take our 9 64th inch Allen wrench and tighten down the two screws, the two set screws for the coupler on this side. Make sure that when you tighten these down that you are, that the coupler is flush with the needle thrust bearing assembly and that the assembly is properly sandwiched in between the, the bearing and the coupler. This assembly is responsible for handling the extra forces, uh, the forces exerted um, by moving the z-axis and if you don't have this properly sandwiched together your, those forces are going to make your motor wear out faster. So now that we've got this assembled, we're going to take another needle thrust bearing and two flat thrust washers. We're going to put the needle thrust bearing between the flat thr thrust washers and we're going to slide the entire assembly down onto the drill shaft. Next, we're going to take our half inch shaft collar and we are going to slide it down on the drill shaft and press it against the assembly. We are going to use the 9 64th inch Allen wrench to tighten this down. Again, you want to put slight pressure on the uh, collar while you're tightening it so that it rests properly 
against the uh, thrust bearing assembly. So now we're almost done. The last thing that we need to do is we need to take the helical motor coupler. And the motor coupler has two set screws up top here, and it has two uh, clamping socket head cap screws. I highly recommend that you remove all of these and apply Loctite to them because these are the screws that will slip out most easily due to vibration. So what's going to happen here is we're going to slide the motor coupler onto the um, onto the drill rod here and we are going to tighten down the one set screw here. We're going to tighten down the one set screw with a 7 64th inch Allen wrench. It's a small, small Allen wrench. All right. Lastly, we need to tighten down the coupler here with the 3 32nd inch Allen wrench. So tighten down this one set screw on the end. We aren't tightening down the motor end, uh, the other end, because we will tighten that down when we get the, uh, when we put the, uh, the motor on. Alright, and now your shaft is, uh, now your shaft bearing is ready to be put on to the extrusion. We're going to set this aside for a moment and move on to the next part. What we're going to do now is attach the motor mount to the extrusion and get the uh, bearing block assembly attached down to the extrusion as well. So what we're going to need is the 15, point, uh, 15 and 3 quarter inch extrusion, a NEMA 23 motor mount, and two 5 16th by 3 quarter inch socket head cap screws. So you're going to want to grab the quarter inch Allen wrench and find the end of the extrusion with the tapped holes in them. The motor mount just uh, butts up against the extrusion and you can attach the screws into the holes, they should rest inside the uh, the counter bores here. Uh, again, I highly recommend Loctite for these nuts. So we're just going to we're just going to tighten them down with the Allen wrench. Now we're going to take the bearing block assembly that we just assembled, and we are going to slide it onto the extrusion. So the uh, the square part of these carriages rest in the T-slots, and we're just going to slide it down. You want the, uh, the, um, the helical motor coupler to be facing towards the motor mount. And we're going to slide it on, and we're just going to leave it, uh, leave it a little loose. You want, the, you want the, uh, the motor mount to be slightly inside the, the circle here on the NEMA 23 motor. It doesn't have to be all the way, uh, it shouldn't be all the way in, but you uh, you want it about uh, a sixteenth of an inch or so inside. Next, we're going to take our four by 10 inch rail, and we are going to need six three quarter inch carriage bolts and six five sixteenth inch nylon lock nuts. And, what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, we're going to take the rail here and we're going to uh, insert the screw on one side and finger tighten the uh, the nuts on the other side here. And we're going to do this to all six holes. Get these all in. What we're going to do is we're going to slide the rail onto the extrusion. You may have to um, turn the carriage bolts so that the uh, squares are facing the uh, 
T-slats properly to get it to fit down. I've got a sixteenth of an inch gap between the uh, shaft coupler and the end of the rail here. So uh, once you get that gap, you can start uh, tightening all these down. Now that we've got that all done, we're ready to move on to the next section.